From losing their heads to puking on enemies, here are 11 examples of the strangest sea creature behavior ever. Number 11, be the leaf. So when you're in the waters of the oceans or seas below, you know that to survive, you have to adapt to what's around you. Whether that be through knowing what predators are a threat to you or knowing your surroundings, it's better to be prepared than eaten. However, the orbicular batfish takes it to a whole new level. Found in the tropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, the orbicular batfish, and batfish in general, aren't very strong swimmers, so they tend to mimic leaves. The juveniles are a rusty brown color and they sway in the current sideways towards the floor back and forth. We can be fooled too. If there is a real leaf nearby, even better. This wouldn't really work in open waters, but juveniles live in mangroves or sheltered lagoons until they reach adulthood. Then their look completely changes and they turn silvery out in more open waters. So when you feel stressed out, take a deep breath and just remember, be the leaf. Number 10, no head on its shoulders. Sometimes a behavior doesn't mean a personality trait. It can simply mean that there's something about the creature that just makes it weird. It can't help it. A great example of this is the ghoul fish. This fish actually has its body merged inside itself in a way that makes it look like nothing more than a ball. Some even call it a floating head because that's kind of what it looks like from a certain perspective. The entire body of the fish is within a unique shell, but it's not one that it can get out of, so it's all contained within itself. Strange, right? Yet, despite this limitation, it endures, and it lives pretty deep in the ocean, so it's clearly doing something right. If you're wondering how does it eat, well, it uses its cells to locate food around it, preferably small creatures of the oceans, and then it'll go out and snack on it. Not quite the headless horseman, but pretty unique. And now for number nine, but first, do you know what has the largest eyes relative to its body size of any animal? Write your guess in the comments below. The answer is coming up. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number nine, the more to smell you with. There are cases when an adaptation or skill is useful beyond the ways that people perceive them. Animals surprise humans all the time with what they can do with what they have. But in certain cases, it's just flat out strange what's going on. Like what? Well, how about how bony fish actually have more than one set of nostrils? While it's totally understandable to have more than one set of eyes, I mean, it works for insects and other creatures, an extendable mouth and several ways to hear things, having several noses just feels wrong. What's more, these nostrils aren't used for breathing, they're used for smelling. Of course, the better to smell you with, my dear. Scientists think that these extra nostrils, which actually lead into the organs of the fish, are used to enhance its sense of smell, which in theory could help it locate food from extreme distances. Why not, right? A bit creepy, but sometimes one super powerful regular nose just isn't enough. Number eight, this is my spot. One of the coolest things to see on certain nature documentaries about the ocean are the bizarre movements of octopuses and other sea creatures. From schools of fish moving around to sharks launching themselves out of the water to catch food, it's highly entertaining. However, if you're wanting to see some great stuff like that, then you would be disappointed if you were to make a documentary about the geoduck. It will not be entertaining. Despite its name, geoducks actually aren't a member of the duck family, or any bird for that matter. In fact, it's a clam. Hold on though, this is where it gets weird and interesting. First off, the clam aspect of the geoduck is kind of pointless. The creature itself can't fit within the shell. Add to that, the extended part of its body, which is actually its neck, roots itself into the sand it's on and stays there for life. Geoducks can live for around 160 years, and they live their lives in basically one spot. Yes, they can get attacked and their necks do get eaten off, but if they don't, if it doesn't get disturbed, it'll just be there like an ocean floor ornament. Oh, and this creature brings out some strange behaviors in humans too. Some people think that the meat of the creature can act as a sexual stimulant. So again, the most common predator is humans who catch and sell them for a high price. Number seven, see me now? 
Light is meant to be everywhere, even in the darkest of places, and many creatures under the water use light to move around or to lure in creatures for them to eat. However, there are cases where using light actually seems like a detriment for creatures instead of a helping asset. Meet the googly-eyed squid. No, I did not make this creature up. This goofy-looking creature has many things that make it both weird and strange. Its googly eyes, its transparent skin, and the defense mechanism that allows its inner body to fill up with water and expand so that it can be much larger than before. But the coup de grace is that it actually glows in the dark. Why would you want that feature? You don't want to draw predators to you, so why have that? Ideally, to attract small, innocent little fishes to it, or just to provide a lamp for dark places. Although if you are swimming around in a dark place and there are monsters in that dark place, are you sure you want to light up your way? Number six, will you stand? When you think about fish, what are the characteristics you think of? Do you picture it swimming around with its fins, its gills? And at any moment, have you ever wondered, man, wouldn't it be cool if a fish could stand? No, you probably haven't, have you? But that's exactly what the tripod fish does. It uses extensions on its fins to actually stand underwater. It does this with three very thin and bony fins that protrude from its other fins. It can be found in the deep sea around the world. It uses its elongated rays, or tripod, to perch over the ground, and then it has pectoral fins that extend upward to detect prey like antenna. What does it do all day? Stand around on its tripod waiting for food. Number five, water assassins. While this list is about odd behavior, some of these ones are just plain scary in how natural this behavior is for them. For example, the archer fish a fish that truly earned its name for the scariest and admittedly coolest of reasons. These fish are small, but they come with one heck of a hunting tool, their tongue. They have the ability to warp their tongue into a special tube. Once they do, they'll go right up to the surface of the water, find an insect, and then shoot water at it. When it hits, the impact knocks the bug into the water. Make no mistake, they're very good at what they do. Underwater assassin fish, no thank you. Number four, a whale of a congregation. Animals are unique in many ways, and just like humans, they can either be very social or very solitary. It just depends on the species and their natural instincts. So when a solitary creature suddenly starts popping up with dozens upon dozens of its friends, people take notice. And that's exactly what's been going on with the humpback whale. To be clear, it's not uncommon for whales to join together in pods. Certain whale species are able to survive because of their large numbers. However, the humpback whale is not one of those types. They're known for being very solitary, and the reports of these new pods showing up has concerned a lot of people. They are usually in groups of three or four maximum, so seeing about 200 in the same area is very strange and impressive. These swarms of whales have scientists very confused. They were recently spotted off the coast of South Africa when they should have been halfway across the world. We still don't know why they are doing this, so this behavior has yet to be explained. Number three, flip or fly. All animals need to eat, right? And creatures have come up with some unique ways to get their food. From manta rays to eagle rays, these majestic creatures have all been leaping out of the water like crazy. Scientists were very intrigued when they started studying their eating habits. These rays eat plankton, small fish, and crustaceans, and people have seen them propelling themselves out of the water, flipping, jumping, and even flying in the air before flopping back into the water, causing quite the spectacle. Why do they do it? It's not a digestive thing, that's for sure. So are they just trying to have an extreme meal, or is there something else going on here? Though there's no definitive answer, many think that these displays help them to funnel plankton into their mouths, but there could be other reasons why they are soaring out of the water. It could be to attract mates, which makes this a very primal thing. This also could explain why rays do this both alone and in groups when they know someone is watching nearby. It is definitely a sight to see. Number two, inside out. Squids are some of the most amazing, terrifying, and unique creatures in the waters. You've already met the googly-eyed squid, but now here's a squid that can do something extremely odd. The vampire squid has a bad reputation, but no, it doesn't suck the blood out of its enemies, nor does it prey on innocent fish in the night. Well, maybe a little. Not much is known about its feeding habits, but it is believed it eats prawns and other small invertebrates. But it does do something very strange. 
the vampire squid can actually turn itself inside out. It flips its bottom half inside out and displays scary looking spines. While these spines are actually harmless, they are probably enough to intimidate predators. Since this type of squid has no ink sac, it had to come up with another way to defend itself. Why not turn inside out? For those of you who answered the question, the vampire squid has the largest eyes relative to its body size of any animal. And it's actually not a true squid. It's said to be a living fossil because it has had very little evolutionary changes over time. While they aren't bloodthirsty terrors of the deep sea, they are definitely fascinating creatures. Number 1. Puke Attack So how would you defend yourself against an enemy? Would you use your fists, your feet, a weapon? Or maybe you'll try and use their own strength against them. All's fair when you're threatened, but it's not so easy when you're in the deep sea. Underwater creatures have certain limitations and can only use what they have to attack or defend themselves. For the species known as the sea squirt, it has a very original way of getting rid of its foes. Basically, when it feels threatened, it'll actually expel all of its innards, basically killing itself in order to get the upper hand. Yep, it pukes its guts out. Which is not only disgusting, but you have to wonder how this technique evolved to be a viable strategy. But hold on, gets even weirder, folks. After the creature does this to itself, it'll shrivel up and go into a kind of death-like state. It's not really dead, but close. After a few weeks, its innards will actually regenerate, and once they do, it'll spring back up and go on living, until it gets attacked again, and then the cycle will continue. Funnily enough, this creature was the inspiration for a Pokemon called Pukumuku, which has a special ability where if it's knocked out, it'll split up its innards to cause damage to its opponent. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty creative. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.